It's always moving when women are the subjects of their own stories. Sometimes it's uplifting, other times it's thought-provoking. In the case of the stoning of Soraya M, however, it's tragic and almost impossible to watch. Please be warned that the upcoming scenes contain extremely jarring and graphic content. We aren't showing this content in order to shock. We're showing it because by forcing ourselves to watch the extraordinary horrors sometimes inflicted upon women, we might vicariously feel an infinitesimal fraction of their suffering. If we feel this, perhaps it'll motivate us to ensure that their voices are heard. The Stoning of Soraya M portrays the true story of a woman framed for adultery by her husband and her subsequent inhumane execution at the hands of her entire village. It puts a name and a story to what would otherwise purely be a statistic. The film, shortly after its release, was banned in Iran, though Iranian people continued to access clips and footage from the film. But what message do governments send to their people in the world about their approach to human rights when they shut out women's stories in this manner? What message do they send to other women in society, and most crucially of all, to other potential perpetrators of these abuses? Let's take a close look at what's happening here. One woman is convicted by a group of men for a fabricated crime. Then his punishment for that crime is tied up and buried up to her waist, defenseless, while another group consisting largely of men throws stones at her from a distance. If there's any act more cowardly and inhumane than this, it's hard to imagine. Though the follow-up comes close. Another group, consisting largely of men with the power to actually make changes this time, deciding that the story shouldn't be heard, that the film should be banned. It's one thing for a rogue group of individuals to commit a heinous human rights abuse. It's quite another to see this level of spinelessness multiplied on an institutional level. We can't fight human rights abuses if those with authority don't do all they can to stand as visibly as possible in solidarity with victims. As Howard Zinn says, in a world of victims and executioners, it is the job of thinking people not to side with the executioners. The silencers often claim this, that there's a level of cultural hypocrisy inherent in the narrative of these works, that human rights abuses don't only occur in the Middle East, but also in Western countries. They're absolutely right, but the answer lies not in silencing all channels of communication, we need to encourage awareness of human rights abuses wherever they occur, whenever they occur. Iranian peace activist Shirin Abadi says that cultural relativism is little more than an excuse for violating human rights. Some human rights must be, and are, universal. Against this benchmark, we need to amplify the voices of silenced people and listen to their stories as carefully as we can.